Hello everyone, my name is Rina. Welcome to Rina Naturally, where I share with you my love of making DIY natural products. And today, I would love to share with you how I make my silky pink clay Himalayan salt soap. And why would I call this soap silky? It's because I'm using Tassa silk. So this soap gonna be very silky to the touch, will give you a very luxurious feeling, and also will give you a little bit of exfoliation because I'm using fine pink Himalayan salt, but it's still very, very gentle on the skin because I'm using pink clay. I love to use essential oil to create scents in my soap more than fragrance oil. Of course, there will be a lot of exceptional, but for today, I only use the combination of blend essential oil to actually make the soap scent. So, no more talking, let's make some soap! I'm mixing sodium hydroxide with some ice water to create light water solution. This solution is very caustic, so I make sure that I will gradually, carefully sprinkle sodium hydroxide into the water. This is a Tessa silk that I will put in the light water solution today. Normally I will do it before adding the sodium hydroxide to the water because the initial heat of sodium hydroxide when added to the water will help to melt down Tessa silk easier. However, adding the Tessa silk after completing light water solution doesn't harm anything. It will just dissolve a little bit slower so there's no problem here. In the meantime, I'm adding some sugar water into this light water solution to help with create better lathering. Because anytime you put salt into any soap recipe, it will just reduce significantly the ability of lathering of a soap. So anything help with lathering, I'll add it in. Now I'm just keep stirring this mixture until everything is dissolved. There you go, look at that! How silky this light water solution is! Hmm, I'm very pleased! Now I'm adding in some sodium lactate to add more moisturizing property and help creating a longer lasting soap bar. Alright! That's all for the lye water solution. Now it's time for the oil. I have coconut oil, olive oil, shea butter, avocado oil, and castor oil. They are very nourishing. I'm quickly measuring the temp here. They're close enough. And before I'm actually add them together, I'm putting in my powder. These are pink kaolin clay and white kaolin clay. They all Australian clay. And adding all this clay into the soap recipe is really good for soothing the skin for people that have sensitive skin. Alright, it's time for the king and queen to combine together. Did you see how luscious this light water solution is? It's so good when you add tassa silk in. Let's blend them up. Ooh, do you see how hesitant I am? It's because I feel like this soap, when I'm adding sugar inside of this light water solution, and I also have shea butter in here, so it will promote trace very quick. So I don't think I have to stick blend it very long. They'll have to be very cautious because I don't want it to be too thick before I adding my salt in. That will do. Now I'm going to add my colorant in using mica and titanium dioxide that already being dispersed in light olive oil. The 
the color is not good enough, so I adding more colorant in. And I decided to put pink Himalayan salt with essential oil in at this stage also. And today I'm using patchouli, red cypress, and pink grapefruit essential oil. Can you guess how it smells? Ah, it smells so fresh and fruity and warm at the same time. Alright, my silky pink Himalayan clay soap is done now. Now it's ready for molding. Look how silky and creamy this mixture is. Adding the clay and tassa silk in the soap make the soap become so luxurious, isn't it? Alright, now I'm just using the classic spoons technique to decorate the top. And sprinkle some rock salt on the top. Keep it very simple. At this point, I'll wrap it up and put it in an isolated box so it's ready to be cut the next day. This is the next day and I'm ready to cut my soap. However, did you notice that my soap had a bit of crack in the middle? I don't really know what's the problem to this. It might be overheat due to the soap contained inside of the soap recipe that actually draw moisture from the inside of the soap result in the crack on the top. I don't really know the reason, but every time I use a soap recipe that contains salt and using a hollow mold, it always have a crack on the top of the salt the next day. If anyone know how to fix this problem, please comment down below. I would love to see your method to fix this problem. Anyway, it doesn't affect anything about the soap, it's just a little bit annoying sometimes. Now let's move on to the cutting, shall we? I wish you all right here to actually touch the soap and smell it. It's so silky to the touch and it smells so refreshing and warm. The note of grapefruit that is so refreshing but then it has that ambient warm heat from patchouli and cypress essential oil. Wow, I really love this scent and I will keep continue using it in my other soap. This is how I scrapey scrapey my soap so it become pretty and neat. And also, I fill in the crack with some rock salt so that you cannot see the crack anymore. But I actually love the way it looks with the crack because it's soaked soap, right? It's supposed to look a bit raw. Anyway, that's how the soap turns out. Have a look. Excuses. It takes courage to lose them. That's it for the video today. This soap will be also available on my website, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching these videos, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now. They make more than a noise. 
Every decision that you make is mapping out your fate. Can't avoid it, and I don't wanna be your water when you're thirsty in a drought.